Hello and welcome back to the Beefy Tech channel. Today we've got an interesting video because I'm comparing the 6700 XT, the Intel RK770 and the 6950 XT against a very famed mega predator called the RTX 4090. What you're going to notice though is that while these are in a 13700K rig, the RTX 4090 is indeed in my 7950X 3D rig, specifically to avoid any CPU bottlenecks on the 4090, as the 13700K is unfortunately not enough for the 4090, but it is enough for the other graphics cards. Let's get started with the RK770 and with the 6700XT as they're very interesting and supposed to be on a similar performance tier level, but as you can see within Warzone that's definitely not the case. At the moment the 6700XT is eating the A770 alive and it couldn't be more apparent by the fact that it's using the same exact frequency and 20 less degrees of temperature, meanwhile absolutely destroying it in performance. Now yes, I'm expecting to see the argument that the RK770 is a 3060 Ti or 3060 competitor rather than a 3070 or 6700 XT competitor. But in my opinion, it does actually compete with the 6700 XT, it just fails to do so well. The idea is that the 6700 XT is an absolute monster in Warzone and performs more around the 3090 Ti, so the RK770 never stood a chance. But I thought I'd show you guys this video just so you see how that performance tier from Intel is hanging in 2023. And honestly, it's not terrible, but the 6700 XT is a clear winner and a better bang for buck. And completely unsurprisingly, the 6700 XT maintains the lead over the RK770 within Vondel. Truthfully, these are both GPU-bound scenarios, which in Vondel won't always be the case, but when you can gain an extra 70 FPS by buying a cheaper card, I'd say go for that cheaper card that gets you the extra 70 FPS, which is a 6700 XT. Not only that, the drivers for the 6700 XT are for the first time in a long time better than another graphics cards. Anyway, this, this is getting a bit repetitive in terms of performance. They perform pretty much identically with Almazra since it's all GPU bound anyway, and it's a no-brainer overall. RK770 has gotten much better, but as you can see, that frame timeline isn't even smooth, and the 6700 XT just performs overall significantly better at every resolution, while being cheaper on the second-hand market. I would also like to quickly go over a screenshot of the results. The only reason I even want to go over this is just to reiterate how bad the situation is for the A770. The 6700 XT cost me about $100 less because I bought it secondhand, and yet it's 20 degrees cooler in the test. It uses barely any more wattage, so like 15 watts more, to achieve significantly more performance. The core frequency is pretty much identical on both uh, GPUs, and not only that, the GPU memory clock is faster on the A770. So, honestly, it's probably all in the Infinity Fabric. But what's even crazier, or at least I thought it was the Infinity Fabric, is that I'm running a 13700K, which would theoretically prefer the A770 over the 6700 XT being run with it, but as you can clearly see, it's not the case. The 6700 XT is much faster in every single test, both at 4K and 1440p. At 4K it tones down a bit in terms of how much faster it is, but it's still significantly faster. And to be honest, the entire purpose of why I even tested 4K is because the 6950 XT was slightly CPU bottlenecked at 1440p on the 13700K, and the 4090 was slightly CPU bottlenecked on the 7950X3D. So I thought, okay, to make this a completely fair comparison with no CPU bottlenecks, I'll also include some 4K data. I decided to also test these two cards just because it would be interesting, but it just reiterates my point of the 6700XT is the no-brainer choice if you play Warzone. There might be some advantages to the RK770, but none that the Warzone player would ever enjoy. Moving on to the big boys, we've got some fun stuff coming up. As you can see, at 1440p, both of these graphics cards are actually CPU bound. Makes for a very interesting test because it's not actually really one-to-one -one comparison in terms of performance, given the, given the 4090 still has 20% usage left in it at 1440p, and the 6950XT still has about 10% usage left in it. At 4K though, both of them are GPU bound, which is very interesting because with this, we can actually quantify the exact performance difference between the two within Almazra. While I'm aware that the 6950XT does scale worse with higher resolutions, it's the only way that I could get both of these graphics cards to be at 100% GPU utilization, meanwhile running the competitive settings that I like to run. And as we move over to Vondel, you can see that both of these graphics cards are absolute monsters and have no issue pushing really, really high frame rates on Vondel. Now, mind you, 
Neither of these graphics cards is actually fully GPU bound, they are actually CPU bottlenecked to a certain degree at 1440p competitive settings, and that is why I decided to also test 4K for these, because it can't actually quantify proper performance difference between them, unless you're actually fully GPU bound, and as you can see, the 6950XT is roughly averaging 180 FPS, meanwhile the 4090 is hitting about 250 FPS, both extremely strong results, but the 6950XT does cost roughly a third of the price of the 4090, so it's the true value king despite the 4090 obviously being the fastest graphics card out there. I do want to make it clear that I'm not an Nvidia fanboy or an AMD fanboy, I just like what's fastest. I've tested the 6950XT against the 4090 several times as they're the only two graphics cards that I do have myself, but I do know the 7900XTX technically matches the 4090 within Warzone, and I can confirm that with benchmarks from people in my Discord channel. Regardless, the performance was strong on both Almazra and Vondel with these two graphics cards, but you'll need a hell of a CPU to keep up. With that said, in the background you've also got the settings that I've used for today's video. They're my config file settings and they're just pretty much all low settings which are competitive settings if you'd like to put it that way. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope it was extremely informative of each graphics card performance tier that I've shown today. With that said guys, I'd quickly like to thank Freety for his recent shoutout. It's helped my channel out a lot and there's a lot of new people around here as a result. Thank you all for the recent support and I do definitely hope to see you around in the next video. Have a good one and enjoy.